Welcome to Horrorverse, my name is Cody Hawk, and today we're going to be talking about the 2013 horror romance, uh, Horns, directed by Alexander Aha, which I have previously talked about from the, uh, Crawl movie, and I just wanted to point out, I did some more research, a little bit of research in this movie, and I didn't realize, in the, in the Crawl movie I said that he had only directed Piranha 3D that I knew of, um, but doing a little more research, he's done Crawl, he did this, which I didn't know about till recently, he did, um, the Hills Have Eyes, the remake. The, I don't know, just the first one, I don't think he did the second one. And then um, Mirrors, which I'm not a big fan of. But, so I just wanted to point that out that I was incorrect in the last movie, or in the Crawl review, that he's done a few other horror movies. Um, I like some of those. I, I like the Hills Have Eyes, Hills Have Eyes remake. Um, but anyways, today we're gonna talk about the Horns movie that he directed from 2013, starring Daniel Radcliffe. Um, now this is an interesting movie, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but it came out in 2013. It's a novel from, I think it came out in 2010, I haven't read it. Um, but it's made by Joe Hill, who is Stephen King's son. So that's very interesting. I think it's like his second, second or third book he's ever done. Um, and I was going to do a Halloween review today, um, but I haven't sat down to rewatch all those movies yet and I just watched this movie the other day so I figured I'd bring this out also because I, I don't think a lot of people probably know about this movie it's not very popular as far as I know of um, I've wa I watched it years back and then it's all, I found it on Netflix last week so I rewatched it and it's an interesting like I don't know how to explain it it's not a great movie like I'll just put that out there it's not amazing but the thing I do appreciate about it is it's different now, like I said, it's a couple years old now, but even back in 2013, we weren't getting these type of horror movies. Like, I don't even know if you go as far as calling it a horror, more than like a uh, romance, suspense, kind of dark movie. But I'm just going to say horror because that's what I'm counting it as. Um, you don't see those type of movies. Like, the creativity, I mean, I know this is based on a book, and I don't know how accurate to the book it is, but whether it's from the book, or they came up with their own ideas, whatever, it's a very interesting concept, and it's different than most horror movies you're going to see nowadays, or even back then. Um, I mean, it was really big on religion. Now, I'm not a big religious person, but I did see the meaning in the point of making this movie. I mean, the dude grows fucking Satan devil horns to avenge his dead uh, girlfriend. And, I mean, I don't think that's spoiling it, because I would, I, I've never seen a trailer for it, but I would assume the trailer kind of points that out, but I don't know. But, I mean, that's the main premise, is Danny Radcliffe's character, I can't, it's like, it's like a Augie or Eggy, I can't remember his name right now. Um, his girlfriend gets murdered, and she was a very religious girl. Her family was very religious, and then her dad's a preacher or a uh, minister, something like that in the movie. He gets, she gets murdered, everyone thinks it was him, and he just gives up on everything, and he wakes up one day, he's got fucking horns out of his head, and the horns give him the ability for people to confess things to him, like say what they're actually thinking, or what their biggest desire is, so he plays on that to find the real killer. I'm not going to say, spoil any the actual storyline, but he uses that ability that deformity to find the killer of the love of his life and I mean the main premise of that right there might not be very interesting but just the concept of the horns and his Daniel Radcliffe's um, acting in this now I've never I'm not a big Harry Potter fan uh, my wife loves them the books the movies everything I don't um, but I have realized a lot of the movies he's in besides Harry Potter I actually enjoy like I like this he did the um, Swiss Army Man, I enjoyed that. Um, Victor Frankenstein was, eh, I think he was fine, but the movie itself wasn't that good. Um, but I think for the role he was given in this movie, he did great. Like, his acting was great. He, the character he portrayed, like I said, he was kind of the, the troublemaker as a kid. And as he got older, you know, he's the alcoholic. Um, a lot of people didn't like him. You know, he was kind of a dick. Um, and then he gets this, this new power or ability and he's still the same person, but now he's using those horns to control everyone else. 
And as the movie progresses, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the end is so fucked up. It's, it's ridiculous, but I'm not going to spoil that for you. You just have to see that yourself. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, the movie's not great. There's definitely some flaws. There's a lot going on, I feel like, because it's at least two hour movie. I know that. And even with two hours, there's so much in this movie with um, side plots and character development. There is some a little bit of character development, but it's so rushed because there's so much going on in this movie that it just doesn't work out. Um, and in my opinion, that's the biggest problem with this movie is it's two hours and it still wasn't long enough, I feel like, to completely stretch out you know, everything in the movie to not feel like a jumbled mess. But like I said, besides any of that, the best part about this movie was the creativity, the concept. It was amazing. that you, you never see people anymore trying for these crazy concepts that might fail, might be awesome, or at least, you know, give some other directors and writers and stuff, you know, some, some creativity to grow the balls to try something different, I guess is the best way to put it. Now, like I said, I'd have to read the book to know how much this um, is close to the book. So, I mean, this could have been all Hill's idea. I don't know. I'm sure there's a little bit of changing in it, but I mean, that's how a lot of book to movies are. They're either completely different, they're exact same, or there's a little couple pieces thrown in there. I don't know. Um, I probably won't read the book, but if you guys want to try that, then let me know in the comments below if you have read the book. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the good thing about it is, like I said, I mean, we need these type of movies in, whole, in, in any genre, really, where someone's willing to spend their money to do something that might not work to get nothing new out there. I mean, because nowadays, especially with horror movies, you know, we're getting either remakes, um, reboots, sequels, you know, I mean, there's nothing original anymore. And the few things that are original, they're still not original, they're just, just like every other movie. I mean, you know, you like the Conjuring movies. I love the Conjuring movies. But they're just rip-offs of the Poltergeist and the Exorcist and stuff like that, just with a little tweak. And that kind of stinks. You know, and then we're getting movies like um, It. I don't know if you can see that in camera, but the poster there. Um, I like the remake. I'll probably like the sequel, but it's just, it's a, that's what it is. It's a remake and a sequel. So this movie gave something different. Obviously, it didn't pan out for, you know, any other directors to actually get the balls to try anything with this. Because, I mean, like I said, I don't think many people know about the movie. But it gives me hope that there are still some people out there that's willing to break those barriers. And I mean, especially with, like I said, Alexander, I mean, Crawl was good. It was kind of different, in my opinion. I mean, it was the monster creature thing, but he added the element of um, being stuck in a house, which I thought was neat. Um, Hills Have Eyes, I really enjoyed that one. I know it's a remake, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. Piranha 3D, another remake, which was completely fucked up. <laughs> But it was different. I mean, it might have been god awful, but it was different. Um, so I would definitely check out this movie. It's on Netflix right now. I don't know how long it's been on there and how long it'll be on there. Um, but just to see the creativity in this movie. Because I mean, there's so much in this movie I've never seen anyone else try, and that really impresses me. Um, like I said, I mean, the re the re other people's reviews might hate it. And like I said, I'm not a big fan of it. I just appreciate the effort to try something different in the genre because that never happens anymore. It's always the same stuff over and over and over again, just repeat, you know, and I'm sick of it. Uh, I would love for some more directors, especially these lower, I mean, I don't know how low end he is, but it seems like to me he's more of like a lower end director because he hasn't done a lot of movies. Um, but I mean, he might be getting up there, I don't know. But it's nice to see them try something because they're not putting as much money, I would assume. I don't know how much money is put in this movie. I mean, Daniel Radcliffe's in it. And I mean, I know he's known for Harry Potter, but he hasn't done a whole heck of a lot after that. Um, so I didn't look at the budget for this movie. But it seems like one of those movies that probably didn't have a lot of budget, um, except for some stuff that happened at the end. Because um, I mean, the horns were probably, you know, they were real uh, practical effects, you know, everything like that. There's some stuff at the end that had been CGI, but that's about it. Um, so definitely go check it out, like I said. I mean, even if you don't enjoy it, I mean, if it's just it's interesting it's a very good concept and it's very religious so I mean if you are a religious person it definitely taps into that other that's 
topic to discuss with other people if they've watched it is the religious concept of it. I'm not, so I'm not even going to discuss that in this movie. But that is a big point in this movie is the religious concept of everything else in the movie. Um, so overall, like I said, Dan Rathgeff did really good, I thought. The movie visually looked well. It was a very dark and gritty um, visual because of everything going on in the movie that would make sense. Um, the acting was fine. I mean, I don't, I didn't recognize anyone else that I remember now um, besides him. There might have been a few other people, but I don't remember. Um, but I mean, all the acting was good. Nothing, you know, to complain about really. Um, at, at times, Daniel Radcliffe was a little over the top, but I think he's meant to be because of the type of character he's playing as. Um, like I said, the main complaint with it is just there's too much going on, and it, it's it's two hours long, but you still it's still too clumped up. And, I mean, there's not much you could do about that, because then if it would have been a three-hour movie, people would complain that it's too long. So, that's just one of those things when you got a book that you're turning into a movie or whatever, kind of like It. There's so much in that book that, I mean, it would take forever to film that if you want to do an actual remake of the book. Um, so, I get that. So, they tried, and I can appreciate that. Um, like I said, I mean, it's just one of those movies that there's not necessarily anything horrible about it. You just have to be into what it's about if that makes sense, you know, like, I mean, there's some horror movies out there that are good, that I know people are saying it's good, but I didn't like because I just wasn't into it, like, um, just off the top of my head, it follows. I mean, I know a lot of people praise that movie as one of the best horror movies of this decade. I didn't like it. I just could not get into it. That's kind of like this movie, is if either you're really going to like it and get into it, or you're not, and you can appreciate it, you just didn't like it. Um, so the rating with this, I really don't want to give it, because like I said, it wasn't my favorite movie, but I really appreciate the attempt to do something like this. So, I mean, I, I guess I would go about a seven, seven and a half out of ten, um, because like I said, it's still not a horrible movie, it's just you have to be into what it's about, and I personally wasn't. But I gotta appreciate the concept, I gotta appreciate the attempt to try something different, and Alexander did great, he's a great director from what I've seen so far, even some of his crappier movies... It had a good, you know, direction. So, I mean, I can appreciate that. So, I think I'm going to go 7.5 7 for Horns, the 2013 movie from the um, Stephen King's son, Joe Hill's book by the same name. So, hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll see you guys in the next one.